Today, I'm going to show you how to create an application that is very similar to Perplexity. In case you don't know what Perplexity is, um, let's go to this website. Um, let's just ask what is Perplexity AI. Perplexity is a new kind of a search engine. What it does is actually search a bunch of sources. If you do the same thing from Google, uh, what is perplexity AI? From the Google, you can see quite a bit of information about. Um, but what's different is it's just a bunch of links. You have to click on those and try to figure out what it is. There is actually a lot of information over here, even if you don't click in. However, perplexity take all those information from a search, it uses a large language model to process that, turn that into either to read information. As of early 2024, Perplexity has raised 165 million. The, the valuation is over $1 billion. Let's have a look at the Mox Plexity. Mox Plexity is a fun name. We just try to build an application that is similar to Perplexity. Let's ask a simple question. What is our block? As you can see, similarly, it takes some search and come from all those kind of different sources. I, I can click here to see this is all those sources are from. As you can see, it's from our uh, official website. It also from some other sources. And the answer is our block is a comprehensive platform designed to simplify development and deployment of decentralized application. That's pretty correct, right? So, and it's also have the key aspect of the art block in, include platform, uh, utility token, and simplified development and the cloud computing integration. That, that's pretty good, right? It also has a follow-up questions and ask, for example, is art block on Ethereum? This follow-up questions, its, it's answer is correct. It says it's indeed connected to Ethereum, but, but we have more than Ethereum's. This is how mock complexity looks like. We can ask the same question to perplexity. What's our block? Perplexity also gave the answers of our block, and it's it's from different source, and it also have a few other information. But overall, they're very similar. Let's come back and have a look. What is mock complexity looks like? Actually, mock complexity can easily created within 10 minutes and there is only one AI agent here I can walk through you how it was created from the input part uh, it has two input one is a question the question is a user input which is means this is uh, a question that the users asks there is second inputs which is called a search result and for this search result is actually calling another agent, the Google Search API. Google Search API is a built-in tools agent. It basically takes the questions to the Google Search and then takes the search result as input. This is a powerful part of the agent's design. In the input, you can not only have the questions, but also you can extend the questions from other agent as the input. That's Two lines here is essentially get um, the user questions and also based on the user question, we get a Google search. Take that as an input of the agent. Um, in this demo, we use a Google search here. You can use other search engine. You can mix different search engines result together as different search results. The key part is the processing part. This is using large language model. We use a GPT-4.0. Um, the system from set use the following context as you learn the knowledge inside this context. And what's the context is actually the search result. The user's prompt is just a question itself. Basically, this is tell the large language model say, hey, answer this user's question. But when you answer user questions, you can use everything that the search engine tell you and use that to organize an answer to the users. And here is a few instructions. When you answer users, if you don't know, just say don't know. That is basically avoid the hallucination. If the user asks something and there is nothing hitting the search engine, if you don't say these rules, the large language model could potentially have the hallucination and give very wrong answers. And also you say if you don't know, 
and uh, when we're, we're not very sure, you can ask for clarifications. So if you ask some very tricky questions, the Moxplexity will not give you answer, but instead it will ask some follow-up questions. Um, there is also other rules, for example, if there's obviously irrelevant items in the list of contacts, just ignore them. That's just in case you have the search engine that give you some of the answers, which is a spam content. Then we have the interesting part, which is output. You might imagine why this prompt can have this user interface looks like perplexity. How do you do it? This is the important part of the agent. In the output, we have a layout design here. In the layout, we're actually using a very simple chat layout. And on those chat layout, we have a few options. For example, we hide the user input, we hide the agent avatar. This is actually exactly a chat user interface, but we hide all those kind of chat-alike user element. So that looks like this is just the content that is keep appending. In the other output part, first of all, we're going to output the questions. The question is going to display it as a markdown. And then we're going to output as a source. And the source is going to display as a table. That's why when you see you can see what's our block. This is actually from the original question. And then you can see the source. The source is listed as a list of tables. Those are come from the search engine result. Then you can see the generate text stream. The generate text stream, what it does is basically marked as a markdown. Whenever a large language model gives the answers, it's going to render this part as a markdown. You can also see there's opening questions. Those are the example questions. When we just open this application, that is a very good place for you to give users some hint what to do. Right? There are also the related search um, questions, uh, give you some suggestions on what related questions. Those are a very good place for the follow-up questions. Uh, you can see we can have this shear here. We have a definition of those shears. That is whenever you have those answers, you can share that to Twitter. You can copy the content. You can even download that as a PDF. Basically, that is it. Moxplexy is very simple. It takes the user questions, use a Google search agent to get the search result data, and then use this search result list as a background to let the large language model to answer the question based on all those search results. Then it's a, the output part, just to take advantage of the agents. You just define what the result looks like, and then it works. And here in the, in the debug area, you can see I ask the same question, what's our block? You can see the call graph it looks like from the Google search answers. You can see uh, result come back, and uh, so those are the JSON result come back, and uh, uh, this is content is going to uh, stream content is going to reply it. All of those rendered into uh, this defined output, it turned out into this moxplexity, right? It is very simple, right? The moxplexity is super straightforward. You are going to be surprised that how this simple agent turn that into Moxplexity, which is a very similar application that it can be perplexity.